So now let's set up our uh, password reset email. We can find the password mailer under app mailers. And this is gonna work very similar to your controllers, except that it's generating HTML and other text and other um, formats for your emails. So inside of here, it's gonna work very similar to your controllers where you can access params. So we can get that params user and we can send the email to params user dot email. So I'll grab the user that we passed in here with the with call and then it will call the reset method. Our params will be set and then it will render the view for this mailer. So under app views mailers, we have a uh, password mailer. We have reset.html.erb and reset.txt.erb. Uh, so we're going to define our templates inside of those files. But before we can do that, we need to generate a token for our user to reset their password. So what's really cool about this is that Rails has some functionality that we can use to generate a token for our password reset automatically. Now, a token for resetting your password can be um, really anything. It just needs to be generic and random so that when we send it out to that email, um, it will be for that user only and we can reference the user in our database. So we need some way to connect the two and Rails allows us to do that without creating database records and we can also have expirations for our reset password emails uh, or tokens. So let's do a signed ID method call on our user. This comes from Active Record um, using a feature called Global ID and what this will do is generate a signed version of a global ID. So if we say user dot two global ID dot two string, it will generate a global ID string called GID colon slash slash the name of our Rails app and the name of our model and the ID of that user. And Rails allows um, this string to actually be parsed and will look up that user as long as everything matches. Now the signed version of this string as you can tell, is not human readable, but that is good because what is um, done with that is that it's verified by the server so that it knows that it's not been tampered with. So if we email this out to somebody and they saw the user ID for, well, I could change that to somebody else's user ID and reset their password. And then I could take over their account. That would be very bad. So we have to use a signed ID or something that the user cannot tamper with. And so by using user.signedID, we can also pass in some other options to handle things like expires in 15 dot minutes. So um, that should be signed ID. Sorry about that. Um, and then this is going to be just slightly longer than our original signed ID that we generated. And that is because it's including this extra information of the expiration. And we can also specify a purpose here. So this signed ID is a token that will reference that user and it will expire in 15 minutes, but it doesn't, it can be used for anything. But by adding a purpose here, like password reset, this will actually make a different token that includes that information. And our application on the server side will say, hey, we only accept signed IDs that are for the purpose of resetting your password. So if you happen to grab a signed ID from somewhere else, you can't use it to reset the password um, in your application. So this is what we're gonna use for generating that token. And we'll include that in the URL that we send in your email. So when you click on that, it will be taken to a page with this in the URL so that you can actually um, reset your password. So real quick before we dive into that, I wanna point out the repository for Global ID. This is built into Rails, but you can take a look at the docs for this if you wanna understand more about how this works. So you can see these methods um, and how to look up a user by the Global ID, how sign Global IDs work, and so on. So take a look at the readme for that, but we're gonna dive into actually sending out that email now. So we need the token for the user's signed ID, and we need that purpose of password reset and expires in 15 minutes. And we'll assign that to a variable, an instance variable that we can render out 
in our HTML and text formats. So um, we need to go and write some content here for that. But first, in order to actually link to the password reset page, we need to actually define that edit password URL. We only have the new and create um, that will send out the email, but we actually need a, a separate set of routes to do the reset itself. So what this will do is something like password reset edit, um, and then we will have a patch method maybe, or a put that will actually handle the edit. Um, and so we'll do the update method here. So we can use that same controller for both of these. So now we can go into our HTML and say reset password is our link and we can link to that route. And so if we go into our console and run rake routes or terminal, um, we can then see the edit password reset route, the password reset edit route. And in your mailers, you're gonna to need to use a URL for this. And that's because the URLs in your emails are actually going to be clicked. These links will be clicked from your Gmail account, hey.com, Outlook, whatever you might be using. You might be on your phone, and those are gonna be in the browser. You're not gonna be on the website. So it needs the full URL that includes the domain and HTTP colon slash slash and everything like that because if you do just path, it's just going to generate slash password reset, and that's not what you need in a different location. So you have to use URLs, and the mailers will actually tell you if you're doing that wrong and you forgot and put a path there. So we can in here say, hi, paramsuser.email, and say that you know someone requested a reset of your password. If this was you, um, click the link to reset your password. The link will expire automatically in 15 minutes. And we'll have our link to reset the password. And now this is the HTML version, so you can include things like line breaks and divs and CSS in here. And then for our text version, we can do basically the same thing except we cannot use a link to because we cannot generate the, uh, the HTML for that. So in this case, we would want to just link to the edit password reset URL. Now we do need to include the token in this URL and we can do that by saying token at token, so we'll grab the instance variable from our mailer, and then we'll assign that to a token in the URL. And I'll show you that in just a minute. So here we'll say token is at token, and if we go to the browser, click forgot your password, and type in our email address, what we should see is we get redirected to the browser. Now we're gonna get an error here because we have a missing host in link to. Now our mailers are sent out and they are not part of a web request. So they don't actually know what domain you are on. So you need to set this default URL options and host for your environment. So in development, it's localhost, port 3000. In production, it's maybe yourdomain.com. And you need to customize this a little bit for your environment. So let's go and talk about how to set that in your environments. This is actually done inside config environments and you have several different environments by default, development, test, and production. So inside of development, we have all these settings that make it easy to develop your Rails app. Production is uh, basically the same but modified a little bit so that it's built to be faster in production and um, remove some of the niceties that you need for development that you do not need in production. Same thing goes for tests. There's some test things set up so that you can run your test suite and uh, it won't send out emails to real people and that sort of thing. So let's go down to the bottom of our config block inside of our development environment and we'll add our config.actionmailer.default URL options. And we'll set this equal to host, localhost, colon 3000 
And if we save that, we're gonna need to restart our Rails app. And that is going to reload those configs and we can submit this form again. And it should be successful and it was. So in our Rails logs, you'll actually see the email is sent out here in the logs. And it's actually quite a bit of stuff. So you'll see that starting at, you know, the delivered mail line down here. And you'll see the different uh, formats that we have. Here's our content type text plain and our HTML version. And both of these will have the password reset edit uh, route. And you'll notice that it says question mark token equals and our token. And if we open this in our browser, what we'll see is that URL is taking us to a password reset edit. We haven't built that yet, so Rails doesn't know what to do, but we can pass in um, parameters into our URL with the question mark, name equals whatever, and then you put an ampersand to separate the other um, parameters in your URLs. So this is one way of passing in parameters in your URLs. The other thing is that you can configure your routes to actually have IDs inside of the slash portion and you can have Rails parse those out as well. So for now, we're gonna use this simple version. We'll talk about the IDs inside of this side of your URL um, later on. So let's go build that edit password reset uh, controller action next.